Good gun morning to you. Went a little early today. Um, just felt like it. But we still have our stories that we are going to cover. Unfortunately, I don't like to cover, I don't like to have two stories from the same source, but Bearing Arms is the premier source for firearm news. Um, and usually I like to use their stuff and then find the original article. Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it with these because they were just citing case law. So thank you to John Perino, Pet- Petrolino, and to Cam and the great Cam Edwards for two great stories coming to us from BearingArms.com. Definitely check them out. Uh, this is only a couple. They had tons of stories there all day. Anyway, major win in Hawaii as the law there was struck down as an unconstitutional permit law. Looks like we're seeing more effects of Bruin shake out. Plaintiffs in a case of Hawaii, out of Hawaii, have scored a major win against the draconian laws that regulate pistol permits and regulation. Uh, I apologize. I'm going to butcher this name. Yucate versus Connors involves two individuals challenging both the 10-day permit validation time frame and requirement for in-person inspection of arms by the police. Now, I've said it time and time again that a right um, delayed is a right infringed. And waiting periods do not do anything statistically correct, you know, despite the fact that the line is uh, said time after time after time that, oh, waiting periods are helpful and and this, that and the other thing. No, that's that's completely incorrect. And so it's good to see that Bruin is striking down unconstitutional things. Uh, As we know, if you ever if you ever uh, have watched this show beforehand, You know I'm going to do the following two things. Look at Hawaii. 1959, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state and the right of the people to keep them, and pretty much to copy the Second Amendment and put it into their constitution. It's still there, though. But Hawaii is number three in the country for gun law strength. Unbelievable. Even, I mean, every town loves them. I'm sorry, we're going to do this as well. Um, I don't like you guys to see all my backgrounds. It's so terrible. Uh, Hawaii, get out of here with your nonsense. Hawaii, get out of here with your nonsense. Has an A- minus score from Giffords. Gun, they have them ranked 4 out of 50. Their, their gun death rank is 50 out of 50. So Hawaii is, and, and I was talking to a law enforcement officer. Um, usually the, the, there's a lawsuit going on right now be, between the attorney general and the feds because the attorney general in Hawaii is not, the state attorney general is not allowing law enforcement to carry there either because of an incident or whatever. Uh, so Hawaii, Hawaii be super anti-gun. Now whatever that's fine but there is something in their state and the u.s constitution that says they can't really do any of that uh let's see all-star lawyers alan beck and stephen stambulik challenged the hawaii statute which read in part uh permits issued to acquire any pistol or revolver shall be void unless used within 10 days after the date of issue uh, and dealers licensed under Section 13431 or dealers licensed by the United States Department of Justice shall register firearms pursuant to this section on registration forms prescribed by the Attorney General and should not be required to have the firearm physically inspected by the Chief of Police uh, at the time of registration. The opinion delivered by Justice Michael Seabright of the District Court of Hawaii picked apart the statue even under intermediate scrutiny, excuse me, the state failed to argue that the provisions of the law have relevance to the interest of public safety. The state is unable to prove this because there's no such evidence that any of these schemes have ever effective, have ever been effective in protecting the public at large in any jurisdiction. This is from the actual opinion. The challenge the challenge provisions in both HRS 134-2E and HRS 134-3. C, are not longstanding and impose only a moderate burden on the right to bear arms. As such, both provisions are subject to intermediate scrutiny. And because the government has the enti- has entirely failed to demonstrate how each law effectuates its asserted 
interests in public safety. Neither law can pass constitutional muster under the standard of review. Plaintiff's motion for the summary judge is granted and the defendant course counter motion is denied. John has long argued that since the creation and implement of the, I feel unconstitutional Nick system the requirement for people to have to be permitted in order to purchase a firearm is beyond moot. A jurisdiction should not have the option for permitting, but only to relive a sit or rele relieve or live, relieve a citizen from the requirement to be subjected to a Nick's check. How about no on both counts? How about Nick's is unconstitutional and permitting go again, goes against the state constitution. The massive win, while it does not state that argument within the court or order documents does. It does have some relevance to that argument. How many background checks should law abiding citizens have to go through? Those permitting schemes are just set up to obstruct and discourage people from exercising a constitutional right, which is in the end what they want to do. They want to discourage you from owning firearms because they don't want you to have it. They want to make as many obstacles available as possible. One of the pins on which this case hinged on had to do with the plaintiffs being required to take time off of work in order to fulfill the state's arbitrary requirements. Quote, Hawaii law currently requires any person applying for a permit to acquire a firearm must do so in person at the police station on Oahu. This means going to the main police station on South Beatrice Street. State law also requires a person who obtains or brings a firearm into the state to register it at the same location. Yeah, hell no. I'm not giving you registry of my guns. Hell no. When combined with Honolulu Police Department's policy that a person pick up a permit themselves after waiting 14 days, infringement, often means three separate trips to the station on three separate days when obtaining a firearm. Department policy limits the time and days people can pick up the permits between 7.45 and 3 p.m. And I'm sure they take like five breaks in between. The department's policy currently has a chilling effect on gun ownership in the state as people are unable or unwilling to take time off of work uh, during the work week to go through the process. Yeah, they're just making it difficult for you to do it. That's the whole point. The whole point is to, is to make it just such a pain in the patootie to be a gun owner. Hawaii is then taken to principal's office for a little scolding. Instead, I'm sorry, indeed, defendant does not provide any historical context in these laws. Instead, defendant asserts that the mere existence is evident that the state of Hawaii's 10-day permit expired period is presumptively valid. This meager showing is not enough. Continuing, something interesting in the opinion regards the in-person inspection of arms. The arbitrary requirement to have a peace officer inspect a firearm in order to register it is absurd. In the amicus brief, every town argues that the state's in-person inspection and registration requirement falls outside the scope of the Second Amendment and, quote, part of a long-standing tradition, regulation tradition, unquote, because it's because of its kind with 18th century militia law. ECF number 94-1 and page ID 866, those laws requiring individuals enlisted in state militias, quote, white men in a specific age range, unquote, to maintain their own arms and, quote, provide in-person inspection to ensure that militiamen were prepared to properly arm if called upon to fight. Let me tell you, let me step back out. That's interesting. Now, they're all about militias. Well, militiamen got to gotta register, but in the same breath, David Hogg was screened that you're not the militia. Which one is it, homie? <clears throat> Which one is it? Are we militiamen or are we not? Because if we're not, according to you guys at some time, then this, this requirement is not valid because I am not a part of a militia. So you cannot inspect my firearms under this militia law. Or, but then as soon as it turns around, it's like, oh, you guys think you're a militia? Da, 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 da. All right, whatever. We either are or we aren't. Just take it. I mean, they can't because that's, you know, they live in intellectual dishonesty. But it's really ridiculous here. Uh, every town cites a variety of state militia laws as well as federal militia acts. In general, as every town explains, these laws required both periodic assessments of militiamen's weaponry, with some laws requiring military officials to keep a record of the weapons held by men in their company. Yes, if you are in a state militia, and that is the fighting force, you have the right to track who has what. It actually makes it easier for you to, to create tactics and to... You know, if you have so many ARs and so many shotguns, you want to spread those out. You don't want a company full of ARs and a company full of shotguns. You want a nice 
beautiful mix of the two. Every time concludes, quote, the ubiqu ubiquity of militia inspection laws means that ordinary citizens in the founding era would have understood a requirement to present arms for inspection to be well within the government's power and thus outside the scope of the Second Amendment, even though that means granting the idea of a militia status. Right? That means that we are militias. <laughs> that means we are militias and we should have, and, and, I'll say it one more time, and if we are said militias and being allowed to be militias, then we should have access to military weaponry. Right? Somebody should take this and the fact that we're being called militias saying, all right, we'll take the militia law. You can inspect it. You can expect my Gatling gun. You can expect my Reaper drones. Go ahead. If I'm a part of a militia now, I get to own I get to own military weaponry. Come on, people. I'm an idiot and I can figure this out. Why don't you take every town to task? If you're going to call us state militias, and if you're going to try and subject us to militia laws that you claim are not militias, so we shouldn't have to be inspected. Fine, if we are... Give me fully automatic weapons. Give me Reaper drones. Give me chain guns. Give me an Abram tank. You can inspect the hell out of all of it. Uh, let's see. Every town's webpage also parrots this. When discussing their brief, seeking a high five from other anti-freedom caucus members. Quote, every town for gun safety's amicus brief explains the long regulatory history that underlies inspection laws. During the founding era, states required in-person inspection of firearms as part of malicious service. So like I said, if we're militia now, give me, give me military guns. Given that the public accepted such requirements as being within the government's power at the time of the Second Amendment's ratification, which is untrue because in order to be subject to this, you had to be part of a militia and have, at that time, military-grade weaponry. Does that not... I mean, these people think they're smart, but this is not... Well, you know... We, we, you, you accepted regulation. Yeah, that's because at the same time, I was having the same firepower as the U.S. military, as the U.S. Army. Like I said, you want to give me Reaper drones and an, a and an Abram tank? Come on in and take a look at them. Oh, look, here's my Abrams. This is very convenient for every time to bring up. More so for freedom lovers than probably they realize. So the idea that the citizen would be subject to the same military inspection of arms that the militia was relevant today, does that mean that every town is conceding that the same citizen that they believe should have their arms inspected should also be able to pe possess the exact weaponry that our modern military uses? Thank you, John. Right there, homie. That's it. If you want to use this argument, cool. Go ahead and use it. Excuse me while I go pick up my chain gun. Excuse me while I go pick up my fully automatic Glock 18. Excuse me while I go get my my uh, my 50 cal that I'm going to mount on the top of my roof. Come and inspect that, sucker. You want to inspect these rocks? That's exactly what they're saying right there. And I, I swear somebody needs to FPC or somebody needs to put, just charge full speed ahead and, and use every town's own language to press forth and say that the NFA is unconstitutional. Come on, man. Somebody smarter than me has got to think of that. Back into the article. I think that's exactly what every town is stating here in their historical conclusions. If they're going to compare the people's right to keep and bear arms in this context, then we must be agreeing that the people shall have access to the same arms as the U.S. military, which would include fully automatic rifles and a bunch of other pieces of hardware that would leave every town leadership clutching their pearls. Yeah, baby. I'm talking Reaper drones. I'm talking SAM missiles. I'm talking everything. Everything. I want access. I want to be like Bruce Wayne uh, in the Nolan trilogy when he was running around the R&D part. Like, I want I want the keys to Lockheed Martin. I want, the I want them all, baby. Boeing, get me in there. Here I come. I want, I want armor-piercing bullets if this is what every town is saying. Every town, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. Does Daddy Bloomberg know that you've and what you've inadvertently done? All of your attorneys out there dealing with every town in your cases, please remind them of this. Yeah, 
They have, they have put it in record. Do you not get this? They have put it in record. Shove that sucker down their throats. Even appeal to SCOTUS. Hey, man, every town says we should that the NFA should not exist. Right? Sorry about that. I'm so I'm so excited about this idea that uh, that uh, I'm uh, I'm talking about all this. I'm get out of here. Um, I'm just all over the place. Let's see. Attorney Alan Beck, one of the representatives for the plaintiffs, said, "I am very happy to have both represented my clients in overturning these two onerous and irrational ro- irrational laws. Both these laws did nothing to promote public safety and were there solely to encumber Hawaii's firearm owners." Correct. Good work that's going on in Hawaii needs to continue slowly and surely unconstitutional provisions of their laws are being hacked and scattered to the winds. Victories like these give hope to other states that are dominated by anti-freedom caucuses like California, New York, New Jersey, Rhode Island, etc. Unconstitutional permitting and registration schemes across this country, this union, are being challenged in the wake of the Yakute, Yaku, Yakute, stand, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, as a positive light and regarding liberties a long take long taken to go. Uh, and then you can read the rest of us because I have a link to the article below. But good for the people, Hawaii. Excellent. And really, we got to take that provision that if every town wants us to, ha- to have our weapons regulated as part of a militia, then open up the vault, baby. Open up the vault. Let me be like John Wick in Chapter 3. Let me walk into the room. Ooh, look, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this one. I want all of it. I'm coming for all of it, man. You bunch of, you bunch of ninnies. You all think you're smarter than you really are.